In this video, we're going to be looking at Vallejo's Surface Primer. Um, now, this is the grey primer and it is a polyurethane um, kind of type paint. So, basically, what this should do is make us a really good primer rather than going off and simply picking whatever you might have on your shelf and just slapping it on and going there's your primer. Um, but first off, before we start, what I've done to this model before I've put this primer on is I've gone off and I've used some IPA, um, just in a little bottle here, a uh, bit of a uh, kitchen paper towel, and I've just rubbed the model down just to remove any kind of bits of dust, debris, um, any kind of grease fingerprint marks, or any nasty contaminants that could potentially hinder our spray work. Right, so now with this surface primer, what we're going to do, what you need to do, you really need to give it a damn good shape because it really kind of does cement at the bottom, sediment at the bottom, and you need to really give it a good shake. And I mean, more than probably you'd normally do with any other kind of paint because it really does go to the bottom and it does separate and it seems to go black at the top and white at the bottom and grey in the middle. It's um, a bit of a mix mash going on there. So just getting our airbrush. That's a bit too much um, pressure going on there. About um, the usual 20% um, PSI. What we want to do, well, you can spray this neat, but I like, I found it a bit easier and nicer if we just thin it down about 50 50. Just like that. So I've got about 50% normal Vallejo thinners, and that's their new formula, not their milky um, old one. So I've given this a good shake, and this lid will most likely not come off very easily because it really does. Let's put that down, dry, rock solid. Ah, there we go. Which is kind of good for it to dry rock solid because you kind of want that for your um, primer coat. And what we're going to do, we're going to pour in our 50-50 mix. So we can just squirt that in nice and easy. And then get in a paintbrush, which I'm just looking for off camera. And what we want to do, with a bit of water as well, just to put our paintbrush in. What we're going to do, just going to mix it up and make sure it's all nicely mixed together. The whole 50 50 thinners and 50 50 primer. Remember, remember to put the uh, thinners in first um, before you put in your primer so the thinners can kind of get down to where the needle the end is, and that's probably what's going to blow out a little bit first. It's just a bit of um, thinners. It just helps stopping blockages um, start so early. And what we want to do now is, <clears throat> when putting this on, we just want to put on a very light misty coat to start with. Literally, so you're almost not no noticing it. It really does need to go down light and misty, because it's almost as if uh, there's a bit of water tension going on with this primer. And if you put too much down too quickly, it will pull up very quickly. So, I mean, that is it, really. I mean, I've just done this front half here, and I've literally given that a very quick, light, misty coat. So, let's just let that dry for a sec. Right, hopefully, as you can see, that is just a light, misty coat. You can just see by the black there that it's gone on quite misty. Uh, and because it's gone on misty, a couple of minutes and it's dry. Uh, what we want to do now is come in with a light coat, not a, a kind of a normal standard coat. Just not misty, but a bit more than misty. And we want to just get it nice and even coverage going on here. There we go. We've given that now a nice simple light coat on top of our light misty coat. So we're really not putting this down heavy. It's really something that it, it does actually pull up quite a bit. It does dry back nicely even if it does pull up, but it really is something that we really need to go light. Nice light coats starting with a first misty coat. And what we're going to do, we're going to build this up and build this up until we've just got a nice coverage all over the model. 
So there we go, nice coverage all over the model, and I've given that about three nice light uh, coats onto this. And why this makes such a good primer is as soon as you've sprayed it on and you've let it dry for maybe 15 minutes, you feel it and then you go, ah, that's why it's a good primer. That is probably the best way to describe this Vallejo um, primer, is to just, it, it literally is, you touch it after you sprayed it on and you can just tell that is going to be a great surface for um, all the spraying that we're going to do um, after priming so I mean you can really feel the difference but there are certain problems with this as much as it's a great primer and really the price as well is quite cheap I mean this is around about the 10 pounds mark which you might think 10 pounds but you get 200 mils and in kind of like buying acrylic paint terms that is rather cheap for 200 mils um, for 10 pounds um, so it is nice and cheap, it gives you such a damn good surface, it gives you a rock hard surface, when it dries, I mean it really does go rock hard, I mean you saw how hard it was for me to just open the lid after that had dried down a bit. Um, and it really does stick to the model as well, but we have a little problem with this stuff, and that is, if I was to, um, because the thing is, once you've done priming, you've not only prepped your, your model for, um, you know, all the spraying we're gonna do after this, but we can also see what problems we have with the kit. Um, for instance, seam lines and join lines, how the canopy's gone on, the wings gone on and everything. We can actually now look and see how well we did in filling, sanding and scribing all our seam lines, all our joins and everything because we've actually got paint down. It's a little hard to tell when it's just bare plastic. So this is a good opportunity now to look at this and go, oh, okay, on the back of the spine here, you know, maybe I didn't quite seal that in good enough. I mean, I have, but let's just pretend I haven't. So I need to kind of re-sand this area. Now, if I re-sanded this now, th what this polyurethane um, paint will do is it won't sand away, it will peel. Um, and what this will do is you'll have like this peeling thing going on instead of it sanding away and what you'll end up with is steps in the paintwork which isn't going to look nice. So how do you get around it? Well there's two ways of getting around this problem and the first one is to simply leave it to properly dry, go rock hard and cure. Now what I mean by this is not 10-15 minutes later you feel it and it feels dry but literally I mean it's actually underneath the surface where it really needs to properly dry and go rock hard so you need to leave this about 24 hours 24 to 48 hours to make sure it's fully dry and then you can sand away at it however there is a second way of doing this and that is <coughs> I'm just getting one out the second way is don't ask me how this works chemically or whatever but there's some sort of a chemical reaction if we come along with an airbrush, right? We get some of our um, Pledge Multi Saf Multi Surface Wax Cleaner, right? If I can just unscrew the lid, pour a bit into our colour cup, just a bit. And what we do is we, we don't need to spray the whole model with this um, Future, right? We just need to spray the area in which we want to sand. So what we're going to do? We're just going to lightly spray nice light misty coat cut to air just to let it dry right and we can put maybe two light coats on there and then just let it dry So I've now applied just two light coats of our future and that has just made it a little bit more shiny. I've given it about 15 minutes to dry and what we can actually do now is so soon after putting this um, primer down which would normally peel, we can now just come along and sand away at this and sand it back and not have any kind of peeling effect going on. which. Hopefully, if I zoom you in, you might be able to just see, I've just sanded that little surface there, which would, there would be a seam line there, but I've always, I have kind of cleared it up quite nicely. And we can sand that away and we've got no peeling going on. Now, how this works, why this works, um, I don't know. Maybe it's kind of like the whole, um, our future kind of dries a lot quicker and a lot harder and it kind of, 
um, locks it in better or something. I don't know how it exactly works. All I know is a quick blast of future um, to lock it in and you can sand uh, away after 15 minutes of the future drying compared to, I mean, if I was to like sand an area up here where I haven't put any future, it, this is gonna peel because it just hasn't had enough time to dry. Now I don't wanna show you the peeling thing because I don't wanna exactly ruin this model and have steps and everything. Um, but there you go, I mean, that is your surface primer and I do think it's well recommended. It is good to go off and get a dedicated actual primer for your models rather than just using any old paint because it really does give you such a nice, smooth surface all ready for modeling. Not only that, I think the color as well is actually a damn good color for doing white. Um, I mean, you could probably see in step-by-step -step video builds how I do white, but I mean, I would start off with white with something like a very kind of off-whitish color that this is. Now you do, you can get other colors with this surface primer as well. I have found that you can actually mix this surface primer with other Vallejo paints as well. So you can kind of, in some ways, mix this with, um, say, other greys, um, and what you end up with is sort of like, um, obviously a slightly maybe lighter um, tone color, but you also get that lovely surface, hard, nice prime protective surface that you get through the polyurethane. So I mean, you know, nice little advantage that you can use there. So it's about 10 pounds. Dan does a good job of um, a nice surface. There was that little problem I mentioned, but I've shown you how to tackle it. And you know, it's gotta be a definite recommended here at Genesis Models. I use it all the time, I love it. And it's definitely, definitely um, a must for any modeler. <laughs> Thank you.